those of you, if this is coming in, I am a licensed cosmetologist and cosmetology instructor. I've been in the industry for 23 years and spent 15 of them teaching cosmetology, hair, skin, and nails in the state of Illinois. Today's webinar is going to focus on the Prohesion Liquid and Powder Acrylic System through Nail Alliance. So welcome to the world of Nail Alliance. Our mission statement is to provide the salon industry with all the tools needed to help make salon businesses even more successful with the latest and greatest in nail products. Establish opportunity for learning through proper education and training courses domestically and internationally. Create superiority within the industry as the go-to nail manufacturer for state-of-the-art products proven to perform to the best of standards while upholding the motto, done right from the start. Understand the needs of the salon industry. As nail professionals ourselves, we have a clear understanding of the industry and the demand for the highest quality products and services possible which is why quality has and will always be our number one priority. So who is Nail Alliance? We are the Jellish Soak Off Gels, Jellish Hard Gels, Morgan Taylor Nail Polish, Fair Luxury Manicure Pedicure Products, Nail Harmony, Prohesion, and more. So Nail Alliance is pretty innovative. With the Prohesion Liquid Powder System, you get to use either the odorless or the traditional monomer with the same polymers. So what that means is that you get to use the same powders with either one of our liquids, both are self-leveling and easy to use. So the first thing we want to talk about is creating that perfect bead of acrylic. With the Prohesion Liquid Powder System, our mixing ratio is two to one. This is two parts liquid to one part powder, and that's going to create a medium wet bead that is very easy to work, move, and control. Working with a bead that is too wet, this bead is going to be really difficult um, to control because it's going to cause an increased risk of having skin contact. When it's too wet, there it's going to pool near the cuticle and the nail groove, and that's where you're going to get that skin sensitivity. There's also going to be uncured monomer trapped inside the nail. So too many monomers reacting with too few monomer polymers will result in a completed nail that is just too flexible and brittle, and it's going to drastically um, increase the chance of product sensitivity, reduce longevity, and adhesion. And a bead that's too wet is going to look like it's just dripping off of your brush. Working with a bead that is too dry, this will produce a bead that is very difficult to move because it's probably not going to move at all. It's probably going to roll right off the nail. The durability of the nail will also be affected. This time the nail is going to be flexible with increased brittleness reduced longevity, and decreased adhesion. And this bead almost looks like an orange peel sitting on the tip of your brush. Now with the correct ratio, this is going to produce a creamy, movable, yet firm bead that has perfect clarity, strength, and durability. And this bead should look like a pearl sitting on the tip of your brush. So clarity. Working or too dry as well as affecting the finished strength of the nail will also affect the clarity of your finished nail. Even if you're working with the correct two to one ratio, clarity can be affected if correct application techniques are not followed. The two wet ratio, this is gonna leave the nail cloudy even after you press the product into place. There's also an increased chance of having air bubbles in your application. To dry ratio, this is also going to leave the nail cloudy, but it's a different kind of cloudy. It's more of a grainy appearance or like a speckled appearance, and that's due to uncured monomers trapped inside the nail causing that cloudiness. So those unpolymerized polymers are just kind of hanging around inside the nail waiting for something to join it. Now with the correct ratio, this is going to give you perfect clarity once you press the product into place. If the product is just moved into place and it's not pressed to compact or compress, it's gonna increase your chances of a cloudy finish. This technique will also eliminate air bubbles in your finished application. Application. So by doing this pressing and compacting, that should minimize some of those air bubbles, if you should have them. Next is the temperature in the room. So the working temperature can greatly affect the quality of your bead. If it is too warm in the room, it will speed up the polymerization and evaporation of the product, giving you a reduced working time in this situation, you want to work slightly wetter with a more two and a half to one ratio to give you that increased work time. If it's too cold in the room, you're going to slow down the polymerization and evaporation of your product, increasing your work time. 
that increased work time is also going to increase your chances of overworking the product, which can lead to air bubbles in your finished enhancement. So in this situation, you want to work slightly drier, work towards a one and a half to one ratio. Now, the temperature in the room is truly that. It's the temperature in the room. It's not your body. If it's 72 degrees in the room and you're cold or your client's cold, do not adjust <laughs> the mixing ratio. Um, you just It's really just the temperature in the room. And when you're ready, you're going to fill your dampen dish to about a quarter to halfway with your choice of sculpting liquids, whether it's traditional or odorless. And the first thing we want to do is condition our brush and remove any trapped air in the bristles. So we're going to first dip your brush into your sculpting liquid, allow the bristles to bend to fully saturate the brush, and then wipe your brush out on the side of your dampen dish for about and you want to do that about two to three times just to make sure that there is no air bubbles trapped in there. Once your brush is conditioned, you're ready to begin. You're going to dip your brush into your chosen liquid. You're going to allow the bristles to bend. And then you're going to wipe the very tip of your brush against your dampen dish to remove any excess liquid. That is the correct amount of liquid for a medium to large size bead. For smaller, green less of your brush, <clears throat> and for, or I'm sorry, more of your brush, and for larger beads, you would drain less of your brush. And then when you're ready to begin, you're gonna angle your brush at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna press one side of the tip of your brush into your sculpting powder. You're gonna do five to six presses for a large bead, four to five for a medium bead, and two to three for a small bead. You wanna use multiple small presses to pick up your chosen bead rather than one large drag or long press through your powder. This is gonna to help to create a creamy but firm bead that's really easy to press and move into place. Before you place that bead onto the nail, you do wanna wait a few seconds for the bead to begin to settle and to firm up. If you're using elegant pink or crystal clear, the bead will change from grainy to smooth, like a pearl. If you're using any of the opaque powders, which are the Studio Cover Warm and Cool Pink, Vivid White, or even any of our Reflections powders. And Reflections powders are all of our colored acrylics. So you just want to wait for that bead to go smooth before you place it onto the nail. Once the bead's gone smooth, it's ready to be placed. If you feel like you need to control the amount of liquid being injected into your bead, you can bleed the back of the bead onto a towel before you place it onto the paper. Our brush angles. So we're going to be working with about a 10 degree angle for the ruby edge, a 45 degree angle for the stress and cuticle area. This is going to help us correctly structure the nail with our brush, resulting in minimal filing. If you work too flat with your brush, then your enhancement's going to be too flat, and that means you'll have to go back in and apply extra product to build the shape that you need. So learning the correct amount of product takes time, but it's going to make your job a lot easier. If you end up using too much product and creating a nail that's too thick, that means you're going to have some excessive filing and possibly too much vibration from having to use too coarse of a file at a snap ball. The vibration can cause micro fractures in your nail, weakening the overall composition and structure of the enhancement. So, and on top of that, you're going to have other problems such as wrist and shoulder pain, which can lead to repetitive strain injury, as well as excessive dust in your breed zone. So these are all things that we want to minimize. <clears throat> now, if you are on the other spectrum and you have enough product and you created a nail that's too thin, this is also going to lead to breakage um, because there is no support to your extension edge. And there's also a chance of breakage on the nail bed itself because again, we've created no support in that stress area. So the first step is to perform a dry manicure. If you've logged into any of our other webinars, you will know that all of our artificial nail enhancements begin with a dry manicure. You're gonna sanitize your hands and your client's hands as well as their nails. If they're wearing polish, remove their polish, file and shake, their nail with your 180 grit file, push back the cuticle with your cuticle pusher and file tabs, 
and then choose your method. Are you going to be putting tips on? Are you going to be performing an acrylic overlay, sculpture nails, over natural nails? Once you've chosen your method, you're gonna gently buff the top of the nail. You'll remove the dust and dehydrate with your nail surface cleanse and a lint-free wipe. If you are going to be applying tips, you would do that at this time. And then after applying and filing your tips, you're gonna dehydrate and remove the dust again with your nail surface cleanse and a lint-free wipe. And then you will apply your pH bond to further dehydrate the nail clay. So I'm gonna talk about using a traditional primer. You'll apply your probond acid-free primer to all of the nails. And then you'll apply your first bead of acrylic to the tip of the nail, holding your brush at a 10 degree angle. Gently pat the product from sidewall to sidewall using the tip of the brush will help you sculpt the product into the shape that you desire. You'll apply your second bead of acrylic to the midsection of the nail, holding your brush at a 45 degree angle. Pat the product from sidewall to sidewall using the body of the brush. And then gently brush the product over the nail in the direction of the free edge. You'll apply your third bead of acrylic closest to the cuticle, holding your brush at a 45 degree angle and pat the product from sidewall to sidewall. Be sure the product is thin near the cuticle and not touching the skin. Brush the product forward over the entire nail. Allow it to cure. Remove the dust and apply polish if desired. If no polish is desired, you could use the dual coat acrylic nail sealer. If you are using the odorless system, you're gonna follow those same application steps. The only difference is, is after the acrylic has been applied, you wanna wait about a minute to a minute and a half for the product to air dry. You're then going to brush on a thin layer of your secure nail resin in one even coat. You'll allow the resin to dry for one minute, and then you can proceed to your filing and shaping and finishing steps. The nail secure resin is also what we use to glue our nail tips on, and it's gonna just create a nice, thin hard shell over the odorless system so that when you go in and file, it files just like a traditional. If you forget to put the odor or the resin over the odorless system, when you go to file, the surface of the odorless system is gonna have a rubbery tacky inhibition layer. You wanna make sure that you cover that, otherwise it sticks to your nail file and it kind of crumbles off of the nail. Um, so the resin's really gonna help prevent that from happening. So before I recap, I just want to make sure that everybody knows it to type in their name, their school name into the chat box. If you're an educator, just type ED at the end of your name so that we're not sending you everybody else's school roster. Um, students, it's so important that you type your name, first and last name, and your school name into the chat box. Otherwise, that be, that's how we track attendance. And if your name is not in that chat box, all right, so just to recap, here is a Prohesion one color tip overlay. So here they perform their dry manicure, they size their tips. This is a two bead method. You're gonna apply your first bead of acrylic where the seam and the natural nail, or the seam of the tip and the natural nail join. This bead is gonna be your arc and your free edge application. You're gonna press once in the center to spread the bead and then you'll gently pat and press and blend towards the free edge. Your final bead of acrylic is gonna be placed an eighth of an inch away from the cuticle. This is gonna give you room to taper the product near the cuticle without it touching the skin. And then you'll continue to pat and press and blend towards the free edge. Once it's reached its correct set point, you have the option of pinching C curves. You can either use your thumb, C curve sticks or pinching tweezers. It is completely up to you. And then once it's fully hardened, then you're ready for your finished filing. We recommend that you start with a 150 grit file, work your way to your 180, and then begin smoothing with your buffer, working from low to high. You can also buff with some cuticle oil and then switch to the Eco Shiner to create a really nice high shine satin finish. If that's the route you're gonna go and you're gonna use the Eco Shiner to create that satin finish, you really need to make sure that you did a well enough job buffing the surface of the nail with your other buffers because the Eco Shiner will show all of the scratches left behind. So if you see any scratches, you have to go back in with your other buffers and continue to buff the nail until those scratches are gone and then go back to your Eco Shiner. 
if you're gonna be doing a sculptured pink and white, you're gonna follow your same prep steps. You'll apply your form, make sure there's no gap between the natural nail and the form. The form is centered on the nail. You're gonna place your vivid white on the form about an eighth of an inch away from the natural nail, giving you room to move the product when you can begin to press it into place. If you place the white overlapping the nail, your smile line will end up being too far down. You'll hold your brush at the correct angle, press once in the middle to spread the bead. This is also gonna establish the center point of your smile line. You'll begin to press up to the smile line you wanna create and out to the nail groove, keeping the bulk of the product in the center of the nail. Once you reach the nail groove, you're gonna push the product back up to create your lower arc, and you're gonna repeat that on the opposite side. Clean up the free edge of the nail and then quickly press from side to side to smooth the nail and distribute the excess product toward the center. This is gonna help create a smooth, even, concave and convex shape. You're then going to refine your smile line. You're gonna turn the brush so that the bristles are facing towards you and you're gonna do a tuck in and wipe to create your smile line. Finish by smoothing the surface. And then to really accentuate your smile line, you are going to place a very small dry bead of your vivid white exactly where you want the point of your smile line to go and then blend it into your previous application. Allow the product to begin to firm. <clears throat> and then wipe and sharpen your smile line. And then repeat that on the opposite side. And then you're gonna place your elegant pink a quarter of an inch away from the smile line onto the nail plate. If you place it right against the white, there is the possibility of having air bubbles between your pink and your white. But once you place your pink, you're gonna press once in the center to spread the bead, continue to pat and press and blend towards your free edge. Your third and final bead of acrylic will be placed an eighth of an inch away from the cuticle, giving you that room to paper the product with less chances of it getting onto the skin. Continue to pat and press and blend towards your free edge. Once it's reached its correct set point, go ahead and pinch in a C curve, either with your thumbs, C curve sticks, or pinching tweezers. And then once it's fully hardened, you'll begin your finished filing with a 150 grit file, work your way to your 180, and then through to your buffers. And then again, if you want to buff with cuticle oil and the Eco Steiner, you have that option. <clears throat> So for more information on Nail Alliance products, you would contact your account executive at your new school. And for future webinars, you would contact myself. I'm gonna flip my camera on while I'm doing that. If you guys can please, those of you who have jumped on, if you have not done so already, please type your name into the chat box along with your school name so that we can track attendance. Educators, just make sure you have the word ED or the letters ED on your, beside your name. All right, so let me know, um, Judy, if you can just let me know if you can see my workstation. I can see it, Marie. Beautiful, okay. I'm gonna change the video so that it's just my video that shows up. mute everybody's microphones just one more time. We're just jumping on. Please make sure that you type your name into the chat box along with your school name so that we can track attendance. If you're an educator, please make sure that <clears throat> you type ED at the end of your name so that we know that you're an educator. And we will begin. All right, so we are gonna do a sculptured pink and white on one finger. We're gonna do just a traditional overlay on the other. I am gonna use both the odorless and the traditional monomer so that you can see both. Grab some free wipes. Make sure you guys are following your state laws regarding dispensing of product. If you are not allowed to dispense directly out of the container, Please make sure that you have extra dampened dishes handy so you can dispense the correct amount of product that you need and then you can dispose of it. 
when you are done. Um, I'm working on a mannequin hand, so if I want, I'm just going to dispense. I already pre-dispensed my product, though, so I'm okay with that. I just keep whatever I use on my mannequins stay in these smaller containers along with my monomer. I don't normally use monomer in such a large dampen dish. Um, this is the monomer that I use on the mannequin hand throughout the day. On my clients, I do use smaller dampened dishes. I only dispense what I need to use, and then I dump. But for the mannequin, we use this throughout the day. So we are gonna do a sculpture pink and white and just a odorless overlay so that you can see both products being used. Let me grab some extra paper towels really quick. So I'll be using the number nine um, sculpting brush. We have a number, this is the nine oval. I have a, we have a, I believe the students get the seven oval, which is this brush. So it's just slightly smaller. And then we also have a 3D acrylic nail art brush. So for those of you who are gonna be dabbling in 3D nail art with acrylic, you're definitely gonna to wanna to invest in a 3D nail art or nail acrylic brush. And we have those available as well. So after you've sanitized your hands and your client's hands, you're gonna grab your cuticle pusher that has the little buffer tabs. I've been using these throughout, um, but I have not been showing. I can actually peel off and you can replace them. Where are my replacements? So you've got your replacement tabs so that you can switch these out for every client and then you sanitize the handle. I love this buffer pad because as you're pushing back the cuticle, it's gonna buff away any excess cuticle that is remaining on the nail. If you're using your wood file or your 180 grit file, I like to use the 400 side of my 180, the 180-400 to file the natural nail. Using your buffer, we're gonna buff the surface of the nail to remove the surface shine. So this shorter nail, it was this length, I just chopped it down. So I'm just gonna try to get that extra bit of plastic off of the nail. Again, those of you who are jumping on um, 3D nail art brush. I have to find my 3D nail art brush. I don't use it regularly. I have no idea where it's at. I will find it hopefully before this webinar ends and I will bring it on camera. I have no idea where it disappeared to. I will find it though. After buffing the surface of the nail, you're going to use nail surface cleanse and a lint-free wipe. You're going to further dehydrate with your pH bond. Well, at this point, if you're going to glue tips on, you would do that at this time. After gluing your tips, cutting them down, buffing them into the nail, you'll remove the dust again and then further dehydrate with your pH bond, and then apply your ProBond acid-free primer. Um, I have tried to get my tips to glue. These are not the replacement nails that are for this hand. Um, it, uh, it takes forever for the company to ship the replacement, so I ordered tips that I found on Amazon and I keep the plastic tips just don't stick to whatever this plastic is I don't know why it doesn't stick to it it's just it will not stick 
it took me almost 15 minutes of letting a nail tip dry before it would glue on. It was so frustrating. So I just do overlays and sculptures. To be quite honest, I don't really do tips on my clients. I prefer sculptured nails over tips, um, but that's just me, my preference. Uh, I enjoy using forms. These are the forms that I ideally like to use because you can cut these down to fit the finger that walks in the door. However, these do not stick to this mannequin hand. So I have a cool one. I'm not a fan of the reusable forms either um, because you can't, and I broke this one. You cannot um, cut these down to fit every client that walks in the door. So, But for the mannequin hand, it's good enough. So we are gonna do a pink and white sculptured and we are going to do an overlay. Uh, do you find that the nails lift less if you use forms? I do. I have the, and here's my, here's my reasoning behind it. So when you glue a tip on, glue is water soluble, which means it breaks down with water. So underneath the nail, where that glue and the nail are joined with the nail glue, when you're washing your hands over time, the water is going to eat away at that glue. So it's going to start pulling away. Your nail, as it grows out, it's going to start pulling away from that plastic tip. I don't get that with forms. And honestly, I'm faster with forms than I am. Gluing tips on just takes too much time for me. I don't like doing it. <laughs> so I prefer forms. That's just my personal preference. Um, everybody will have their own, and you are okay to use tips. I'm not opposed to tips. It's just I'm faster without them. Um, I'm going to use clear, and we're just going to do our overlay. I did put primer on. See, I lost my train of thought already. So, all right, we're going to do primer. We've done primer. So, I'm going to grab my odorless monomer gonna dip my brush into my monomer and some air bubbles have floated to the surface. I like to give my brush just a bit of a twist to fan out those bristles. And I'm gonna do that a couple more times. And now I am ready. All right, so with the odorless system, I do find that it self levels a lot faster than the traditional. So I tend to work with it slightly drier. And I also am in the outskirts of Chicago. So it's probably like, I don't know, 45 degrees right now. And I do have my window open. So it is a bit chillier in my office right now. So I am gonna work with this slightly drier because it is a bit chillier than, you know, the average temperature it should be in the room when working with acrylic. I'm gonna angle my brush at a 45 degree angle, and I'm gonna do multiple small presses to pick up my chosen bead. I'm gonna wait for that bead to go from grainy to smooth, and once it goes smooth, I'm gonna place that bead onto the nail. I like to level my powder. I don't like powder that's already been dipped into, it's just, again, a personal thing. So if you notice, the odorless bead has completely self-leveled very quickly. I don't have much chasing after the product that I need to do. I'm just gonna gently pat the product so that it's not too thick on my free edge. So odorless products, if you're not familiar or have not used odorless before, they take, a long, they take longer to firm up and harden. So you wanna just be really gentle with your brush. You don't wanna push too hard. Otherwise you're gonna flatten it out too much. And it's so soft because it takes a little longer to harden that you could disturb it and flatten it out too much. So you just have to have patience when working with the odorless system. Again, 45 degree angle multiple small presses to pick up your chosen bead. I'm gonna wait for that bead to go from grainy to smooth. I'm gonna place that in my midsection. I've got my brush at a 45 degree angle. 
going to gently pat the product. Now, if you get too close to your nail groove or the cuticle, do not use your brush. Don't do this. Have an orange wood stick and use an orange wood stick to clean up around your cuticle and your nail groove. The monomer on your bristles is what's going to cause that sensitivity on your client. So don't use your brush to clean up around the cuticle or the free edge or the nail groove. So I'm gonna drain more of my brush because I just need a little tiny bead for that cuticle area. Got my brush at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna turn the hand really quick. So I've got my brush at a 45 while I'm near the cuticle. Marie? Yes? There's a question. Do you find that the nails lift less if you use a form versus a tip? Judy, I've already answered that question. Oh, it just came up on my chat box. Your chat oh, box see? is behind. But yes, I do find that there is less lifting okay. forms than I do with um, tips. I'm gonna build up my arc just a little bit more, like right there. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit for about a minute to a minute and a half before I can put my resin over it. So while that is Set it. setting, I'm going to show you guys how I clean my brush. So have an orange wood stick handy. I'm gonna place my brush onto my paper towel and I'm just gonna gently separate the bristles. I'm not gouging anything out. I'm just separating them just to make sure I don't have anything between my bristles. And I'm going to wipe the brush clean and I'm going to squeegee out any excess. I don't know what spring alcohol is. Oh, you mean spraying alcohol? <laughs> um, honestly, I've never tried it, to be honest. I just follow my manufacturer's instructions um, because by the time I'm done cleaning my brush, a minute has gone by, especially on the first hand, it will be completely done and I can apply my resin. Um, but I've never tried it. Um, I can try it. I'm not gonna try it on today's webinar, but I'll definitely try it off of the camera. <laughs> So I'm going to squeegee out any excess liquid and then I'm going to reshape my brush. A couple things that you should not do. Do not swirl your brush when you're cleaning it. It's going to fray your bristles. Oh, when, uh, when you clip down the natural nail when I'm, yes, I definitely clip down the natural nail when I'm gluing tips on. And then I kind I try my best to reshape my brush into its original shape. And then when you store your brushes, your options are to store it laying flat or bristles pointing down. Do not put them in cup holders, bristles pointing up. Um, I just find over time, there's still monomer between, like right underneath the ferrule. That drains down into the ferrule of your brush. There's an adhesive in here that's holding these bristles in place. It starts to eat away at that adhesive and then you start losing your bristles and then you gotta replace your brush. 
So if you want your brush to last a long time, put it in a drawer or a container laying flat, or if you do have a personal space, go ahead and I have mine sitting in my overhead lamp and it's bristles pointing down. It just hangs there until I'm ready to use it. And yes, I am gonna use this same brush with my traditional. Um, you can use a separate brush for odorless and traditional. Um, I have yet to have any issues, at least with the Prohesion using the same brush. I have had no issues with it. Um, so I still use the same brush. I'm gonna grab a fresh paper towel. Grab my white, grab my pink, my traditional. Before I do that, let's put our resin on, as I'll forget. And the reason why you want to wait that minute, if you put your resin on too soon, you're going to get acrylic buildup in your resin brush, and you may get brush strokes in your enhancement, because these are those really thick nylon bristles. So you just want to you know, have a nice smooth surface. You don't want any brush strokes and you definitely don't want acrylic stuck in your brush of your resin. All right, so we are going to do our pink and white. I'm going to recondition my brush, and I'm getting some air bubbles floating to the surface, so I know my brush is pretty dry, so I have to recondition it. So with the traditional, you definitely want to follow your say, the correct mixing ratio, two to one. Gonna angle the tip of my brush at a 45 degree angle. Don't do that. I kind of had a feeling I was towards the bottom of this little container and that I needed to add more, but I was kind of hoping I didn't have to, but I have to. So when I dipped my brush into my dish, I'm literally at the bottom of this dish. I did not have enough product in there. That's what I get for using such a small container. There we go. Don't hit the bottom of your container. Forty-five degree angle, multiple small presses to pick up your chosen bead. Wait for that bead to go from green to smooth and look like a pearl. You're going to place that an eighth of an inch onto the form. You're going to press once in the center to spread that bead. You're going to continue to pat and press until you reach the nail groove, and then you're going to push the product back up. Push the product back up to reach your lower arc. I'm going to shorten this nail a bit. So the nice thing about forms is that you can put whatever shape you want in. Now, if you're gluing tips on, you can also, I would definitely cut the tips into the shape that you want your client's nail to be, especially if you're doing like, I don't know, stiletto, pointed, ballerina or uh, what's the other one coffin put that shape in the nail cut it into your tips as well that way you have less filing you have to do later so now i'm going to do a tuck and wipe And then I'm going to add 
a smaller drier bead right here in each corner to accentuate my smile line. I'm going to drain, 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 drain. I'm going to pick up a smaller, drier bead, and I'm just going to place that exactly at the point of where I want my smile line to go. I'm going to wipe my brush clean. The reason why we're using a dry bead is because your brush holds a lot of liquid. So when we go to blend this into our previous smile line and blend it into the lower arc, there's plenty of liquid in my brush that's gonna soften that bead back up and get it to blend nicely. And I'm gonna repeat that on the opposite side. So again, a nice dry bead. And just make sure you're balanced on each side. Smooth out your top. Grab your pink. Forty-five degree angle, multiple small presses. Wait for your bead to go from grainy to smooth. Place this bead a quarter of an inch away from the white. Angle your brush at a 45 degree angle. You can be a little more aggressive, if you will, when you're patting and pressing because it does firm up a lot quicker than the odorless. So you can be a little more aggressive on your patting and pressing. And then when I get to my free edge, I like to go back to that 10 degree angle and just kind of feather it out. Forty-five degree angle with your brush, and then smooth. Smoothing that out. And I am going to do a tiny, tiny, tiny bead near that cuticle area because I didn't quite get all the way to the cuticle. Now, if you're gonna be pinching C-curves in, you do need to work kind of one nail at a time because you do wanna be able to pinch in that C-curve before it hardens too quickly, especially if you're doing pink and white um, because I don't want that white to get too hard before I can pinch in my C-curve. So I am going to, I'm gonna leave the form on. Um, normally I would take it off, but I just applied up there. So I just wanna squeeze in on my sides just a bit. Really get that C curve in there. So we're gonna let that sit for just a bit and then we will go ahead and begin our filing. So in the meantime, I gotta clean my brush. And then again, for those of you who may have jumped on late, please make sure if you have not done so already, type your name and school name into the chat box so that 
Correct. We can track your attendance. If you do not put it in the chat box, you won't get credit. All right, so we are ready to at least file our odorless system. Let me just check the chat box really quick, make sure I didn't miss any questions. I think I got everybody's questions. If I missed a question, please retype it. All right, so let me grab my 150. I've got my 180. I lost the buffer. buffer. So with buffing, I typically stop at a 180 grit buff um, because I finish my enhancements with gel polish. If you are, if you're going to be finishing with gel polish, you definitely need to stop at a 180 grit. Anything higher than a 180 is going to um, too smooth of a surface and you won't be able, your gel polish will peel off. Um, yeah, I don't, you know what though, my internet, I, before I even logged into today's webinar, I had to reboot my computer. So I was late logging in. I think it's just with all of the distance, <laughs> distant learning that's been going on um, around the world. <laughs> I think the I think if anything's going to crash during this pandemic, it's going to be the uh, internet. The internet is going to be broke. What's that movie? The kids' movie, Wreck It Ralph, where he breaks the internet. That's kind of how I feel is what's going to happen. The internet is going to break. Okay, so when I'm filing, I like to pinch my client's finger just a little bit to pull their skin away from the nail groove, so I can get in there with my file. If it's a brand new file, make sure you score your edges so that they're not super sharp. And then I like to do my nail grooves first, and then my free edge, and then I do my surface filing. You should not need to do a lot of filing near the cuticle because we kept it nice and tapered. And then for my free edge, I also like to angle my file at a 45 degree angle and I file downward to get a nice bevel towards the free edge. So if you are going to invest in these mannequin hands and you decide to go the route of not purchasing the tips or the replacement nails that fit the hand, um, every once in a while when I'm doing some filing, these tend to pop off um, because they are not the right fit. I mean, it's a good fit. It's just not a perfect fit like the ones that originally came with the hand. Um, again, but that's what I get for buying the generic nail tip off of Amazon. But you know what? It works. Um, yes, I did use a reusable form for the pink and white. Ideally, these are the forms that I like to use. They don't stick to the mannequin hand. It doesn't stick to that latex or whatever this rubber is that they make these fingers out of. All right, so now I'm going to switch to my one eighty.
Um, I only use the reusable forms on my mannequin hand. I never use reusable forms on clients. But if I was going to disinfect, I would definitely use some alcohol or a hospital grade disinfectant to uh, clean those. I do not like the reusable ones. I only use it on the mannequin because that's all that stays on this finger. I think I bought those forms from Amazon. I think they were like $8 for 10 of them. But for the mannequin hand, it works. I'm gonna buff and then I'll finish. I'll finish my pink and white. Um, if you're if you don't want to use polish, if you're not gonna polish and finish with the dual coat acrylic nail sealer. I don't use this product because I don't have any patience to let things dry, um, especially on camera. So I always finish my enhancements with some sort of gel polish. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to stop at the 180. But if you are going to be applying polish to the nails, you're probably going to want to go even further with your buffers and do the, like the 220 or the 280. Now, at this point, you're going to have your clients go wash their hands. My client cannot wash their hands. So this is my sink. She's washing. She's washing. She's getting all the dust off. Even though she went to the sink and washed her hands, I'm still going to wipe her nails down with a lint-free wipe and nail surface cleanse so that I can make sure that she did get all the dust and oils off of her nails. And we all know, every client does it. They go wash their hands, and when they're walking back, they have to touch and feel and wipe all that oil off. All right, so I'm going to finish this one with my Top It Off Top Coat. I'm gonna grab a gel polish for the second nail. So if you are doing gel polish, you don't have to use base coat. You can go straight to your two coats of color. The base coat in the gel polish line is strictly for adhesion of the polish to the natural nail. But since, make sure you take your plate off. Since the natural nail is covered, you don't have to use base coat. And I just totally smudged that purple when I tried putting the lamp on because I did not take the plate off of the bottom and I probably should have fixed that before I cured it um but I chose not to all right this is perfect timing for me oh my pleasure I hope it I hope you enjoy the odorless it takes a little time though like odorless practice with it otherwise I mean you'll learn to love it um you can get the mannequin hand on Amazon um, I purchased, I got mine through Essential Nails, um, but Amazon also carries them. I don't know what the brand is on Amazon, but really they're all the same. Just make sure you order the tips that go with the hand, unlike myself. Unless you're okay, like me, if it pops off, it pops off, you just snap it back on. But it clamps to the table. As soon as I take it out of the lamp, I will stretch the hand out so you can kind of see what the arm looks like. But it's just, has, it's almost like a, if you're a cosmetology student, you're familiar with the mannequin head clamps that clamp to your workstation or your uh, table. It's the same concept. It has a little like C clamp and then it has, I call it a go-go gadget arm and I'm totally aging myself right now. Those of you who are in your mid-40s or older, like myself, 
you will know what that means. Go, go, gadget. Ah, Inspector Gadget. I knew somebody knew who it was. Now, I know they made a movie. I've never seen the movie. It's oh, that. Inspector Gadget, yeah. Yeah. I, I watched the cartoons as a, as a child. You know, maybe that's what I will do with my children during this while they're homebound. I will force them to watch all the old shows that I used to watch. I love torturing my, my kids. I'm going to make them watch all that old stuff. All right, so after you have done your top coat, you're going to remove the inhibition layer. If you've done gel polish, where's my cuticle oil? Oil. And then follow with nourishing oil. So your cuticle oil or your nourish from the gelish line, um, really advise your clients to continue to put gel uh, oil on their enhancements. It is going to prolong their enhancements and prevent a little bit of lifting. Um, your nails are like kitchen sponges. So like a kitchen sponge, it absorbs water. And when a sponge absorbs water, it expands. When a sponge is wrung out and it sits overnight to dry, your sponge is going to shrink and it curls. Your nails do the same thing. As your nails be absorb liquid or moisture, they expand. As they dry out, over they shrink. So what we want to do is remind our clients to always put cuticle oil on. The oil is going to help prevent that nail from absorbing any extra or excess. So they get less of that shrinking and expanding, and they'll get less lifting or the less likelihood of lifting. So it's really important that they keep cuticle oil or nourishing oil on their nails during uh, between appointment times. All right, let me see if I can find that 3D nail brush. If you guys could see what my office looks like right now, just from all the webinars I've been doing, it is a hot mess and I have no idea where it went. Found it, it fell on the floor. Okay, so this is a 3D nail art brush. So let me grab my other brush. So you can kind of see the difference in the size of your bristles. So the 3D nail art brush is really tiny. So it holds very little liquid so that you can create those three dimensional designs. So now I don't think it's going to stick now that I just put a top coat on there, but We'll see. We'll see what it will do. So you want to work with a drier bead of acrylic. And so I'm just going to do a flower petal. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to angle it like it up. I'm going to try to do this sideways. I'm going to angle it and I'm just going to press down like on a 45 degree angle so that I can get a raised ridge on one side and then it's flattened and I'm going to create a little V shape. And then I'm going to use the tip of my brush to really fan that out.
and you want to work with your brush on the drier side. The problem I'm having right now is because I'm putting this on top of a my bead is moving until it dries. It's not attaching to a rough surface like it would if I was doing it on top of a freshly applied acrylic. So don't do this on top of a top coat. You're not going to get a nice result. Then you'll create another petal. If you wanted to create a leaf, you can do the same thing. And then you would continue to make your petals all the way around your nail. And just practice and play. If you wanted to do a leaf, you could do, we'll put a leaf in this corner over here. If I was going to do a leaf, I'm going to press down in the center and then pull my acrylic up, pull the acrylic up to make a V, and then take the side of your brush and then put an indent in the center, and then that will create a leaf. I know, is it kind of blurry? Sorry if it's blurry. There you go, that's the concept. And then maybe you can do like a little, little dot in the middle. I don't know, be creative. Um, I could do one. Um, I don't really do 3D nail art, to be quite honest. Um, I'm not that great at it, to be, uh, to be, to be more honest with you, because I don't do it regularly. Um, but I do like to play. So that's why I bought the brush, so that I can play and practice. Um, so I'm really not that great. I'll be honest, it's not my specialty when it comes to nails. Um, 3D nail art is definitely in progress. <laughs> so I'm not quite really sure I'll do a webinar just yet. I think I need to practice my skill a little more before I get there. I'll be the first to admit my weaknesses. No shame in that. Well, that was great. So you yeah, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed the webinar. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box before we log off. And then um, otherwise, email the questions to your teacher and they can get those questions over to me and I'll be more than happy to email you guys back and answer any of your questions. So thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your yeah. evening. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for the positive feedback. Yeah, thank Thanks you. Bye-bye. Thank you.